My name's Tom Dixon and I'm Head of Fundraising and Communications at Roald Dahl's Marvellous Children's Charity. We provide specialist nurses and support for seriously ill children around the UK. Now, I'm here today as a volunteer of the Chartered Institute of Fundraising to tell you about fundraising in practice and making sure that you review your performance effectively. So in our last video, we talked about how to develop a basic fundraising strategy. Um, before, you, before you start to implement any of these new, idea, new ideas that you've come up with and brilliant ways that you're gonna engage the public to, to hand over their hard earned money, it's really important that you understand the regulations and that you have the right policies in place to deal with any tricky situation. It's also important to think about how you will monitor the effectiveness in, in your activities. Because remember, any activity we do and that we spend money on, we are spending our donors money and it has to be really well justified and really, really well spent. So getting these steps right at the start of any activity will make life a lot easier further down the line. So this video is going to take a look at the key regulations that make sure fundraising is carried out to a very high standard. The things that you need to think about and agree upon as an organisation before you start and how you're going to measure all that newfound success that I'm sure you're going to have. Wherever you are in the UK, there is an organisation that regulates charities and an organisation that regulates fundraising and they're there for us to use, so please do use them. Charity regulators are statutory. You know, they're set up by the government. The, the government register the charities and make sure that they are being run properly and lawfully. Super duper important. And fundraising regulators are independent. Um, charities and community groups can choose whether to show their commitment to good fundraising practice by registering. And I think that's a really important point because a lot of fundraising is about trust, is about people trusting that the, the money they give you, that hard earned money that they hand over, is being used in the right way and they have to trust you to get an impact for that money. So there is a code of practice and the fundraising regulator is in charge of that code of fundraising practice. Fundraisers across the UK should follow that code of practice as it gives you a real core grounding and is very, very helpful. It includes both legal rules that you should adhere to, as well as best practice standards for fundraising. And every charity or community group, whether registered or not, is expected to follow those standards set out in the code. And at its core, fundraising must include, or must be, sorry, legal, open, honest, respectful and accountable. Let's look at legal. This is how responsible you are to handling funds and personal data, both really, really important things, especially to trust. Safe and secure donation handling is important to protect the organisation from fraud, theft or embezzlement and to assure donors that their donations and gifts are used for the purpose of which they were given. Really important. You also need to be able to be careful about how you handle and store any data you have about supporters and the wider public, such as email addresses, phone numbers and names. Personal identifiable da uh, data is very, very important. So you have to be sure that you have the right processes in place to be able to handle it and to prove that you handle it in the right way. So on to the next one, number two, open. Honouring your promises to your supporters. If money is raised for a specific purpose, it has to be used for that specific purpose. Restricted fundraising. This means that you will need to think carefully about what you will do if you raise more money than expected, or if you fail to achieve your fundraising goals, what will happen? If you think it's likely that you may exceed your target, you will need to inform your donors from the start about how any excess funds will be used. This applies to donations from individuals, businesses, trusts and foundations. Equally, if you come under your target, how are you going to make up the rest? How is your project still going to run? A lot of donors may give you unrestricted money, money that can be used on anything. But be prepared for questions from people who say, well, where did my money go? 
you need to be able to tell them where their money was spent and what the impact it was that it had on your organization. Next one, being honest, being clear and truthful. Again, super important to trust, really, really important. Whenever you're raising money, you will need to make it clear who or what you're fundraising for. Always tell the truth, absolutely so important, and take care not to mislead or exaggerate any facts at all. Trust is a vital currency in fundraising, as I've said, and can be hard to make up when lost. For me, when I'm fundraising, I have certain projects that I fundraise for. Um, for example, we provide specialist nurses. We will raise money for, for example, a nurse in, in Belfast here. We may be raising money there. If I'm raising money in Belfast and I tell the general public that's where it's going to be spent, that's where I will make sure it is spent. And we have a process in place um, with our finance team to make sure the money is spent on that specific project in Belfast. And if anyone rings up and questions that, we can show an audit trail, evidence that that's what we've done. Next one is being respectful, treating the public fairly and with respect. Very important. Fundraising should always be a positive experience for people. It's an action that enables the public to engage with and support the causes that really matter to them. Fundraising is all about the heart. Charity is all about what's coming from the heart. And people want to have an uplifting experience when they're giving their money and they want to know what happens to it. So they've got to be treated well. They've got to be treated with respect. So always treat the public fairly and take care never to pressurise anyone into giving. It is important to think about how you respond to donors who might be vulnerable or in vulnerable circumstances and support them to make informed decisions. So then being accountable, taking responsibility for your fundraising. If you have carefully considered your fundraising decisions, ensure that you have followed the regulations and acted in line with your values and policies. You shouldn't go too far wrong. At the same time, mistakes can happen and sometimes a fundraising campaign will not go to plan. Be willing to explain your decision making process and be accountable for those decisions that you reach. Remember, any decision you make could be questioned by anyone. If something does go wrong or a complaint is received, make sure you can handle any concerns promptly and sensitively and learn from that process, learn from those mistakes. A well handled complaint can be an opportunity to strengthen a supportive relationship as long as you deal with it correctly. Again, having a complaints procedure, having a way of recording those complaints and responding to those complaints is a must for anybody um, who's who's fundraising from anyone. So processes and policies. They all need um, to be simple explanations of how you will behave in certain situations. So you really need to put yourself in those future situations and think about what could happen. They need to be written collaboratively within your organisation. Um, and you can find examples of many different types of policies online. You could also ask your peers in other organisations to share theirs. Often, if you think you're in a situation you can ask other people and I'm sure they will have been in that situation at some time in the past and will be willing to share. It's the great thing about the charity sector. People are willing to share their experience and to collaborate with you. There are some key policies uh, your organisation, no matter what the size, should really have in place. Working with volunteers, really key for us as charities. Managing risk, working with third parties, complaints, as I mentioned before, very important. Acceptance and refusal of donations. Um, when when do you draw the line? You know where where is it that you wouldn't accept money from? Where is it that you would? It depends on the organisation and it depends on the person as well. So, um, but having a policy in place for that is really important. Working with vulnerable people, as we talked about, safeguarding hugely important for for any organisation. Having no financial processes in place, as we talked about with with funding um, just now. And then having that privacy policy in place. We talked about dealing with data. This will help you to deal with data. So advice, guidance and sample policies can be found in a number of places. And we've listed some in the description below this video. So please do go and have a look after we finish. I mentioned at the top that we would be also talking about monitoring your performance. So making sure that you're spending your money in the right way, spending your donors money, sorry, in the right way, 
to raise even more money. And that's the key goal here is we're trying to raise as much as money as possible. So ensuring that you've got a really good feedback loop in place to change and improve and learn from mistakes is really important. And fundraising is a constantly evolving process. Every fundraiser needs a way of testing, monitoring and reviewing their activities. Testing what works. Often the best fundraising campaigns are a case of trial and error. It's important that your organisation understands that some things will not work and those that don't, it, it may take time to find the right fit for your organisation. What works for one won't work for others and so on. It depends on supporter bases, it depends on types of cores, it depends on geography and so on and so forth. Think about ways you can test your activity, your messaging, your promotion. What you know elicits that human reaction from people? What gets people really emotively involved in what you do. Really, really think about that. And there's some good ways of testing it. So, for example, try changing the amount you ask for and you suggest on your online donation platform. Even a simple change can make a big difference. At Roald Dahl's Marvelous Children's Charity, we have an, we have an online platform and um, we've been testing recently different messages on Facebook, for example. Um, Digital is now a really great way of testing simply and really cost effectively different ways of, of writing and different ways of uh, showing, for example, images or videos. And we'll test different things to different audiences. For example, we may show an image of a nurse, for example, and what, what feelings does that elicit with people? Does that uh, um, ask people to give donations? Or similarly, what about uh, the image of a, of a child, one of our beneficiaries that we work with. How does that then create a mo an emotive response? And similarly in copy, we'll, t we'll test copy, um, length of copy, um, different words in that copy and so on and so forth. And doing it simply on platforms like Facebook that, that you can then really track through um, with Google Analytics um, can really help you to make fast decisions at a very cost effective rate. But as I said, testing and learning is a key part of this. Speaking to other charities, con uh, being part of special interest groups on the Institute of Fundraising, on the Charter Institute of Fundraising is super important because you get to meet so many other people. Being part of your local regional group as well is also very important because there, as I say, there are nuances around the country and people will have tested things. They will be learning all the time and it will give you ideas for how you can test and learn. So monitoring and measuring success. So evaluating your charity's progress is just as important as your initial fundraising planning. Don't be afraid to identify poorly performing campaigns. There will always be something you can learn from it. Equally, it is important to identify what does work for you and to celebrate your fundraising success. Fundraisers do get a lot of uh, rejection. We need thick skins, but when we do something really well, we have to celebrate it and we're good at celebrating. We enjoy celebrating and that's a really key thing to do. So the amount of money that we raise is not the only thing to measure. It's important that we look at the supporter engagement, the donor satisfaction, the number of people reached and so on and so forth. Consider and agree with others what success will look like for your organisation and how you will report on this. Can't emphasise that enough at the beginning of any campaign. Really look at what success looks like. So reviewing your plans. Your fundraising plan should be reviewed continually. It cannot stay fixed. The world is changing, especially at the moment, and we'll need to adapt to a changing world as we go along. This means keeping an eye on developments in the sector and beyond and thinking about how that might affect your plans and also what opportunities that that throws up for you, because there are always opportunities around the corner, no matter what you're doing. There's always a different way of doing things. Test it. Don't be afraid to try it. So in summary, there will be there will likely be a lot of pressure on you to go out there and start fundraising as soon as possible. But without that solid fundraising plan and a way of measuring success, they will or may be wasted efforts. Take time when you can to take a step back and look at your overall plans and be sure to involve others wherever possible. Your stakeholder management within your organisation is so important. So here are some things to consider to consider and think about while you do this planning. Are you fundraising in a way that is consistent with your charity's values? Does your fundraising follow the code of fundraising practice? 
Is your charity registered with your national regulatory body? Do you have a process for monitoring feedback and responding to any complaints? Are you putting the experience of your supporters at the very heart of what you do? Because that is key. Thank you for listening. I hope you found that useful. We've provided you lots of links and interesting information, so do go out there, do heed that advice, and best of luck. We hope you raise a lot of money. Good luck.